Dear examiners, hope you are doing well. The title of our presentation is Non-GPS Based Mobile Robot Localization Using Extended Command Filtering. Authors are Nazirket Tataeva and Yersultan Maimuhan. And supervisor of the project is Professor Almas Shantimirov. And the outline of the presentation is consisted of introduction, methodology, results, discussion, conclusion, and then followed by the references. And the main objective of the project is, a is the realization of smart skid steer robot that is capable of recognizing objects around itself and self localized using the extended common filter and without GPS navigation systems. Extended common filter uh, EKF fuses the algorithms uh, and estimates positional and orientational characteristics. Using this proposed filter, the control performance is expected to be robust to terrain changes as well as to localization errors regarding, regarding the wheel to ground interactions. And uh, specifically, aim of the Capstone 2 is the implementation of extended command filter in simulated robot as well as on a real robot. As for the problem statement for robots, ineffective estimation of control parameters in the main is the main issue that directly affects the skid steering robots due to the complexity of the wheel to ground directions. And that's why the control parameters are especially important for the skid steer robots. And this brings an incomplete model of dynamics and consequently decreases the accuracy of control and its performance. And for the future census, this kind of robots are intended to operate indoors as well as outdoors applications. And uh, this project could be the breakthrough in exploratory missions to, to distant places or even the planets, bringing exceptional solutions in terms of control solutions of such robots or vehicles and machines. As general background concerns, I want to talk about EKF, which is an uh, extension of the Kalman filter and a well-known Gaussian filter for computing beliefs, first invented in 1958. It is for nonlinear systems and used Jacobian equations and other mathematical equations for uh, derivations. It has following advantage, uh, which makes it attractive for many use cases. First, it is computationally efficient. The reason why is that it doesn't go through the um, uh, like hundred or maybe thousands of size of the particles every time step to compute a belief. Instead, it goes uh, through several mathematical equations, which are better, like easier to solve, uh, and computationally efficient. Uh, for the same reason, it uses less memory, so hence memory efficient. The third reason is that it is actually, despite it is uh, far simplified than other uh, algorithms, it is suitable to many standard scenarios and uh, relatively robust. So it can be a good option for indoor robotics, given that uh, there are less dynamics around. Nevertheless, before using the EKF, one has to be sure that following assumptions are satisfied. First, uh, posterior belief uncertainty is, should be an acceptable range. Here, posterior belief is the um, uh, filter results. It is first understanding uh, of the robot about surroundings. So it will co uh, conclude this um, observation from the measurements given and motion input that is from the motion control. Also, environment should be, in a should be relatively stable. Uh, it's non-linear, should be in a suitable range. So it means that uh, some uh, like dynamically moving objects should be less or maybe um, not present. Uh, this, uh, nevertheless, also, uh, like in our Copstone project, we do use not pure EKF, but instead ICR-based EKF. Here, ICR is instantaneous centers of the rotation. Um, why do we do use it? Because usually, uh, like both in research and industry, skid steer robots are popular. The reason why is that it has simplified mechanics uh, and it is controlled just with the help of the uh, difference in the uh, wheels of the robot. So that is why, uh, because of the, these kinematics, uh, there will be three ICRs, uh, each from the right and left hand side, also like body ICR which will lie on the side which has higher velocity. 
uh, and we will pay attention to this important ICR uh, kinematic property because it will help to update the velocity uh, and uh, this updated velocity will be more resilient or on the some errors which will happen during the uh, like turn around of the vehicle that is key steer robots uh, around some point like during the rotations so it will be very crucial to pay to this attention because usually EKFs will fail uh, most of the time uh, in these turns and rotations and the impact of the research project would be solution to the mobile robot localization uh, where for that research will uh, be testing and uh, reviewing current localization techniques and the second uh, second impact would be the fundamentals for the advanced algorithms of simultaneous localization and mapping and the outcome result would be suitable for other robots not only for the skid steer mobile robots and the good examples would be differential driven roads or tracked vehicles as methodology concerns here we will look for the important equations of the icr based ekf for this purpose we will uh, pay attention to the paper written by the pennsylvania state university researchers in 2014. here um, our state will consist of three uh, variables north coordinate of the position is coordinate of the position heading or so-called yaw or jaw of the robot in Euler angles also we have uh, right icr left icr and uh, robot icr here uh, we have the expansion of the equation in terms of also called some uh, Euler model it is called so that uh, we use first of all initial uh, like uh, last uh, data then we will multiply time step to the uh, previous velocity and then we do also multiply the timestamp to the noise so it will continue to the all elements except ICRs which can't be modeled uh, with the help of velocity but heading can be modeled with the help of the uh, like uh, angular velocity not a linear velocity here like uh, we can uh, dedu deduce that it uh, comes from the like integral der derivation uh, 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 relations and here another set of the equations uh, actually it is only subset of the equations for the EKF here we have state covariance which is essential for EKF computations and here we do have F which is uh, mm, like uh, derivation of the state uh, over state variables and here we have derivation of the state of the, over the noise variables and here we have Kalman filter gain like this is a standard formula and we also do have here this um, uh, full equ uh, full equation of the um, deri sta uh, derivation over the state which consists of this uh, small uh, 3 to 3 uh, matrices uh, this is the important point to consider and uh, we will use it in a further implementation uh, here we have this uh, three tiny like four tiny matrices because uh, like three to three uh, matrix is first uh, derivation over the like these first variables and he this f i uh, this uh, matrix is derivation over this part and here uh, like o and i matrices are derivation of the same order of the state variables but also over the like uh, icr part so like in the first uh, three rows we will uh, like take the derivation of this uh, n, e, and phi over variables of n, e, phi, and y, i, c, r, right, left, uh, and uh, total. And here also in the bottom three rows, we do calculate uh, like derivations uh, for i, c, r, right, left, and uh, total for all the six uh, state variables. And here we do have the like uh, our code implementation and uh, initially uh, for sure we will initialize some uh, um, covariances but first of all we will initialize the noises and here it is important to consider this um, 
uh, covariances because it will be uh, later uh, contribute to the calculation of this Q uh, and uh, for the computation of the R which is a noise uh, covariances for first of all motion model and here R is for the measurement model. Uh, these variables can be different and vary from the vehicle to vehicle depending upon the mass and also it will vary depending on the terrain and some sleep track interaction and other kinematic and mechanic uh, uh, properties. Uh, here we will further uh, update uh, our velocities uh, with using the ICRs. So here is the like important point which makes our algorithm uh, and algorithm of our implementation and algorithm of the early researchers uh, unique because it helps to uh, for this EKF algorithm to be resilient on changes uh, during the rotations and turnarounds. Here we do use like absolute values of the difference between ICR is it will help to the algorithm to uh, converge faster. And the next we will uh, like uh, compu compute uh, the state variables according to this Euler expansion. And this is a simple uh, like implementation plan in MATLAB written here. Here uh, next we will have uh, like computation of this um, derivation uh, like deriva uh, derivation of the state variables over the state. Uh, so here the like FS matrix uh, a, uh, which uh, we will use here, and here is the FK matrix which we will put it here. Uh, these are called Jacobian matrices and this is the place where our uh, slightly nonlinear system will be transformed to behave linearly. Uh, so here we will join all, like our uh, variables to a matrix and we will further define other important matrices that will be used. Here Q is the important motion control covariance matrix. Uh, and here H is the derivation uh, like of the measurement uh, variables of the over the measurement state. So here further we will update our measurements uh, al along with uh, motion update. This uh, both of them are important for the IKEA computations. And here R is the six to six another uh, matrix that is the covariance for the measurement model. So here are the final equations of the EKF, uh, like this, these are the traditional equations which will compute uh, the Kalman gain from the, uh, from the covariance uh, state matrix and also it will update state and uh, we will, it will uh, continue in the iteration every time step. Ross, robot operating system. It's an open source system designed for robot and robot applications in various scenarios for which it provides hardware abstractions, implementation of functionality of robot. Therefore, it's a robot software platform that has development environment for particular development of robot applica application programs. And the main focus of ROS is to maximize the reusability of code in robotics research as well as in development. In our case, we use ROS Melodic Morania on Ubuntu 18.04 system. And ROS has such characteristics in package management. Um, it allows to share and modify and develop the packages in a convenient way. And this will be discussed in the ROS file systems structure session. The second characteristic would be the public repositories. Uh, it flows from the package management, meaning that they are available in public repositories if the author wants to share their work, uh, meaning that it's very convenient. Uh, the third would be the distribution in the processes of the in in the ROS. Uh, here um, meant that minimum executable processes called nodes are responsible for the processes that run independently with the systematic data exchange. And lastly, compatibility with the different programming languages. It means that ROS has a compatibility of with the programming popular programming languages as C++ and the Python. Um, it allows to use their available libraries. Consequently, the organization of the folder, uh, folders in the ROS looks like this, on, uh, as in the right side of the presentation. 
where the meta packages and the packages are the minimum uh, structural components uh, where the runtime processes of the nodes, configuration files and uh, other files are contained. And with the aggregation of uh, those packages, uh, whole functions are made up. Uh, and those packages are stored in the folder, which is called as the workspace folder. As then the packages and the meta packages manifest. Here, uh, the file within extension of that XML is is the important component of the package and the meta package manifest. Uh, this component is responsible for bringing together the licenses, required dependencies, and etc. Uh, while the messages uh, is important for exchanging uh, data between the processes that occur in the um, rows. Uh, then the services, uh, each process provides services, they are activated through the request and the response of the services. And the uh, fundamental process of ROS networking is, consist are, is consisted of the nodes, master node, messages, bags, topics, and services, where the nodes are the computation, uh, computation where the computation occurs, um, meaning that nodes interact with each other to create ROS network. And uh, for the example, in the robots, uh, the nodes perform different tasks, tasks in order to bring functionality of motion and scanning and etc. Et uh, and nodes are convenient for large functionalities uh, uh, that are divided into the nodes. And those nodes are written in, uh, on the basis of ROS client library. They are based on uh, C++ or Python. Uh, and in addition, ROS is convenient for debugging those nodes. Uh, then the master node, it is the registration and the lookup for the nodes to find each other, to exchange messages uh, and to invoke the serv services. Without the master node, other nodes will not have those functionalities. They will not be able to communicate. Therefore, the master node runs on the one computer, whereas the uh, other nodes connect to it in order to communicate with other nodes. And then the messages. The master node and the other nodes communicate using the messages. Messages are the information shared with the certain data structure, which are primitive types of data like integer, floating point, boolean, and etc. And then the bags. Uh, this is the file format for saving the ROS messages data. Uh, it it is very convenient for the sensor da data to be played back. Uh, then the topics, uh, they are responsible for transferring above mentioned uh, messages, node published a topic. In a ROS network, if the node is receiving messages, it is the node subscribing to the topic. Basically, it's a bus to transmit data. Then the services are used to communicate with nodes to receive a reply. It's not possible to do it without the topics. With topics, it serves as a request and response interaction between the nodes and the user. And the source code for the invention of the service is stored in the SRV folder. And ROS has the ability of simulating. And for that, it has um, a popular two simulation tools um, called Gazebo Simulation Environment and the RVs, where the Gazebo Simulation Environment uh, is a handy tool for, uh, for the recreation of the real world environment. Uh, and uh, in that environment, a robot, a robot could operate in terms of the kinematics, dynamics, uh, in the same way as it would in the, in the real world. And the gazebo has such features uh, as obstacles, uh, obstacle plugins, and uh, those flag plugins can be very handy to recreate the real world obstacles. Uh, that is particularly useful for the uh, robot localizations in, in our case. On the right side, you can see the environment that has uh, some obstacles and the other features like in the real world. And the second simulation tool that we used is the RVs, which is the visualization of the messages messages was described uh, earlier. Uh, these are the basically messages are the data. And the Aris helps um, that data to be visualized. And uh, it is very convenient for the eyes to be perceived uh, better. 
and uh, and pair with Kazibu simulator and Arvis, uh, the messages can be displayed on the real time basis basis. You can see on the right side the first picture where the Gazebo environment is shown and on the second picture uh, the Arvis uh, is showing the visualized messages of the laser of that robot of the robot that is located in that environment as for the result um, robot was built using the 3d printers uh, the chassis and the holders of the drivetrain holders of the battery pack and the computer were uh, built using the 3d printer and uh, on the left hand side you can see uh, all necessary parts attached and assembled and on the right hand side you can see the dimensions of the robot so this is the robot uh, that will uh, that works on skid steering uh, and what is skid steering uh, well skid steer proposes that the robot wheels are synchronized in order to move um, for example for forward or backward movements uh, both front and uh, rear wheels are synchronized and uh, uh, rotates at the same manner while the turning to the left on the right requires two side wheels to synchronize and in that way the turning left or right is achieved and the next slide shows uh, connection schemes of the main components of the robot here Jetson computer runs uh, the subscriber node to the main master computer uh, master node whereas it has data co data connection to the cube which provides IMU data from inside sensors as well as odometry data from encoders of the motors uh, then uh, this IMU and uh, odometry data are published in ROS environment of the Jetson computer then Jetson computer connects to the main computer where the master node is established uh, and in addition the uh, radio control system through the RC receiver of the cube uh, is established for safety reasons as the EKF localization algorithm is run uh, the robot moves by itself uh, and in case of minor errors the robot has a chance to get into the wrong position and direction at a certain speed which might end up crashing the robot or anything in the environment without establishing the manual control like the radio control uh, the running the EKF algorithm on the robot would be risky and then this slide you can see how cube as well as json computer are attached on the same platform uh, and uh, uh, their location in the robot and here you can see that cube is uh, attached at the center of the robot um, this is because the inertial momentum units imu sensors of the cube uh, is requ are required to provide uh, data uh, and uh, it is it's estimated that uh, IM sensors are located exactly at the center of the uh, turning point of robot. And next, as was mentioned before, IMU and odometry data are published in the Jetson computer, uh, where it uses Mavros package in order to make IMU topic and as well as odometry data uh, topic from encoders. And on the right hand side you can see IMU publisher where it publishes information like position, orientation uh, and angular moments uh, from the twist. Uh, however, for the geometry data from the encoders of DC motor, uh, data cannot be inter uh, data, data could be interpreted into the IKEA fusion algorithm as the data exchange didn't work seamlessly. Sometimes encoders would not even send any data because of the encoder issues. DC motor had synchronization problems, which was the main control type of the skid steer movement of the robot. Uh, therefore, it should be noted that the components could be used several times before uh, our application uh, and the assembly and disassembly process would affect those components like motors and uh, in certain way, to damage them. This video demonstrates the movement of the robot by the manual control and you can see the skid steer movement of the robot uh, turning left to right and moving forward and backwards. 
second part of the results consists from the analysis of, uh, from the implementation of the simulation and analysis uh, and before uh, move on to this part it is important to mention that for simulations we have used jackal outdoor ro uh, robot environment well uh, at the same time for hardware simulation uh, hardware um, analysis we have used Jaguar uh, robot the reason behind is that uh, like there is a less available resources for the Jaguar uh, uh, ROS uh, simulation environment while there are many plenty of them for the Jackal robot and they are suitable to use uh, and for research purposes uh, also at the same time uh, like uh, we had available Jaguar robot for the analysis and hardware work so we have worked in parallel uh, with different robot model models but uh, also it is important to mention that both robots uh, are outdoor robots and have almost close dimension as you have uh, seen from this uh, like width and length uh, measures which for Jaguar was like uh, 500 millimeters and width was only 400 millimeters like there are just only slight differences um, so that is why uh, in the future terms uh, the results are integratable and good to go so now uh, let's go to the simulation part our object, our simulation, as was said earlier, it is a jackal unmanned uh, ground vehicle. Then pass is used curve trajectory, but it can be later used can, uh, tested with some um, uh, circles or some infinity sign or like basically anything. Uh, for simple test purposes curve trajectory was used but it, uh, it isn't a big deal and uh, payload uh, payload is 20 kilogram uh, just a standard payload uh, and w it is a maximum payload for Jackal actually which is itself 17 kilograms and duration of the runs was constant and 6,000 iterations which is for the like uh, 50 gigahertz update of the data measurement data uh, will turn to 120 seconds uh, we do use Jackal ROS environment Gazaba RVs and we have uh, three runs for this particular uh, simulation experiment here first of all we will evaluate the relation between ICRs, noise covariance, and localization accuracy. Uh, and regarding the curve trajectory, it is important to mention that it is okay to move with this because uh, curve tra trajectory will consist uh, from the different turns. Uh, as ICR is for investigating the turns and uh, stability of the EKF for the turns, uh, this path will suffice our needs. Uh, so, like, this is our first experiment, as said, and this is uh, uh, run one of the first experiment. Here, we have tested our simulation algorithm with poor covariance uh, of the motion model uh, for a position, and we have also used uh, poor ICR settings uh, which are here and poor convergence it, it is important to mention that usually these uh, ICRs aren't set uh, are good to not to be set to these values but uh, these are used as just extreme values to see the like algorithm behavior as you see here uh, like our uh, because of this poor convergence for the ICR our algorithm our like uh, ICR values uh, like right values uh, left hand side and the total value is a uh, conversion too slowly actually it isn't uh, even uh, not that conversion and uh, taking into account that we have poor uh, covariance with our like uh, position uh, state variable uh, we can uh, see that our like measurement uh, result measurement data and IKEA filter output uh, isn't in a good shape actually IKEA results are a bit unstable and uh, differs from the measurement pass um, so this is like our first experiment but then uh, later we will also observe that uh, if covariance uh, for the position motion model will be good then uh, things will be better also 
So here uh, we still have in Iran two poor covariance, but uh, also poor ICR, but uh, this time good convergence. And as you see here, our uh, like ICR values are readily uh, converged uh, to a, a, like ground truth values, and. Uh, Z then we also do observe that uh, these uh, heavily unstable parts of our algorithms are uh, like more stable, more straightforward. Uh, so if we will have a, like good convergence of the ICRs, we can reach to a better results, better ground truth, and uh, our localization accuracy will be better also. And he <coughs> here uh, there is a third round. Here we have uh, like still uh, poor covariance, and this is uh, like a continuation of the previous results. So here our ICRs uh, for about 40 runs, uh, like located uh, around the uh, 0.25. Here they are uh, located around 0. minus. Uh, 0 0.75 here also negative sign and here our ICR right position located around 0 0.5 and here we do see that it actually converged till the 61 cycles of the uh, like our runs and it will uh, like take that much time which is uh, like couple initial couple of the seconds and this in the third run we finally use uh, like good ICRs here we have actually used even ground truths which are 0 0.5 minus 0 0.75 and minus 0 0.25 why we have chosen these values because it is kind of um, uh, good to have a uh, value when uh, we use uh, like um, dimensions uh, for the ICR right and left that is like width and length correspondingly but as we have also additionally 20 kilogram payload we have increased a bit uh, our values but it isn't actually maybe the hard truth but it could be good estimation of what could be the ground truth so here we see that uh, like no time for convergence it is already stable and uh, like our covariance for the position motion model is also in a good shape which is 0 0.35 and uh, it is also important to mention that it can it will surely vary from the device to device from terrain to terrain and other uh, system of the kinematic properties and here we see that our like measurements and IKEA filter results are in line with each other and uh, like accurate. So the main conclusion which we will derive from here is that uh, like uh, the main conclusion we will derive is that uh, covariance uh, matrix if the covariance matrix uh, both of them and both initial in ICR initial values are poorly set, then the effect of an ICR to localization accuracy and stability will be considerable and actually heavy. As we see here, like here we have many uh, like unstable uh, go arounds, and here there are less uh, go and backs, and here we have also like more thin uh, and straightforward result. These are because of this our like poor covariance matrices as was stated earlier, and because of this uh, convergence. Here it is converging too slowly, and here it is converging uh, like um, faster. Uh, also, like another important point is that uh, in any case, ICR effect will be uh, like present, but just if the covariance matrix is well set, then its effect might be smaller. Uh, so that is why it is crucial to configure both the like uh, motion measurement model noise covariances and ICR itself. The second part of our simulation results is a comparison of the ICR based EKF to the state of the art EKF like uh, custom EKF. For this comparison, we have used robot localization EKF. Uh, 
source file uh, and we have compared our like uh, MATLAB based simulations to what we had after the simulation using the robot localization and uh, its navigation stack so after uh, like running uh, actually for the in uh, for the first uh, simulation results also we have like uh, run uh, the simulation used gazebo and rvs environments so here is uh, the same environment uh, just for this case uh, additionally uh, for uh, to the like velocities and odometry and IMU data we have also uh, parsed the robot localization uh, publisher uh, like robot localization DOM filtered topic for the like updated uh, EKF updated um, state uh, results so here are some results as you see here we have used uh, covariance of position 0.35 and icrs of 2 minus 2 and minus 1.5 it is like just uh, average expected values that might be initial value for the algorithm and uh, we have used a convergence of 0.025 actually important point to mention is that this covariance is uh, not only for position but for the angle uh, that is for heading and other variables uh, were similar for both robot localization and for our MATLAB based EKF. So after like uh, parsing the results of the robot localization based EKF and after comparing our EKF filter result, we have uh, like uh, observed that our uh, actual algorithm, that is uh, algorithm that we have um, uh, implemented looking uh, for the like uh, Panzer and other uh, researchers uh, algorithm uh, behaves better uh, for the like turn turns here as you see like uh, for every turn uh, it is uh, like it uh, the robot localization based uh, algorithm is uh, like turning to sharper also uh, there is only like that much uh, angle of the rotation uh, here also you can see that it is actually uh, rotating uh, like it is uh, diverging from the road right from the beginning because actually initially I um, at, at the beginning of the ride there was some sudden turnaround uh, so like uh, robot localization EKF was uh, sensitive to that change while our EKF was more like stable at that point um, actually generally this uh, original EKF will follow uh, like uh, algorithm just the point is that uh, sometimes it can uh, like response to the sudden uh, turnarounds uh, like to the radius of the ICR uh, like uh, very sensitively if the turnarounds are like uh, not that sharp as you, we see for example here and here these changes are also correspondingly uh, not that big and they are far more smooth but for this uh, sudden change uh, we have seen here and here we have seen that uh, like EKF uh, rob localization based EKF is uh, a bit sensitive actually we have run this comparison for different paths also and like result was that uh, original EKF was less uh, accurate with the turnarounds and here is a like localization error or we can call it difference uh, for the time being this is a, uh, like maximum of the like error in every iteration or maximum of the difference every iteration uh, collected as a normal distribution it is centered about 90 point uh, uh, 235 meters uh, and here the like results uh, as we see like uh, still we have some convergence but it is fast from like this point to the like ground truth and here is the like uh, some 
uh, like a normal distribution of the results but it is too tiny uh, too thick because like more results are like collected uh, con uh, concentrated at one ground truth point which are 0. Minus 0 0.75 for ICR left and minus 0 0.25 for ICR total and also plus uh, 0 0.5 for ICR right. So what kind of conclusion can we derive from this experiment is that new EKF is more accurate than default EKF, especially on turns. Uh, so that would be important point to consider and we can like uh, test this algorithm for all the different uh, scenarios, but for the um, like many set of the uh, test it was uh, concluded that uh, new EKF with ICR updates are better uh, then uh, uh, any ways to be sure with the like conclusion on which is what algorithm is better or not better we should use like confident ground truth uh, for the position data for example in this case we have used a uh, uh, odometry data but we can use GPS or some GPS analogs for indoor robots that are being developed in current robotics research industry then um, um, then uh, these are the important points to consider and this uh, third point is what I have mentioned earlier it was just like the point that even at that point uh, we had some turnarounds uh, it is actually not seen here because it shows only east and north points uh, heading is not shown but here like robot stayed at the same place but like moved uh, to the right and left and heading is changed because of this change like uh, like robot localization based EKF had changed suddenly also so regarding the discussions uh, here uh, the important points that have been achieved is uh, uh, like uh, regarding the hardware part we have implemented IMU and odometry publishers that could that are like important points that can assist us uh, in implementing this simulation uh, in the future with the hardware itself then uh, we have also uh, tested uh, and uh, like uh, worked with a uh, radio control uh, remote control uh, with safety measures for example uh, with uh, having uh, like with controlling the uh, robot with the joysticks uh, or some remote control device would be better for the sudden stops uh, or some other um, emergency controls rather than controlling it from the like uh, computer or uh, from some hard stop buttons in the robot itself then uh, we have also uh, achieved uh, like uh, we have also evaluated the effect of an ICR to localization accuracy then, uh, which helped us to understand the original paper and some other different papers and importantly the practical uh, importance of the ICR on localization accuracy and uh, on uh, fixing uh, the resilience for turnarounds so then for that purpose we had also like uh, another achievement which is a comparison of the ICR to state of the art EKF implementation which turned around to be good and successful so that our EKF was uh, more accurate than robot localization based uh, EKF uh, some uh, stages that affected development of our regular robot is that uh, like we had to change a standalone IMU which uh, reside in the regular robot itself to a cube IMU here cube is uh, like advanced uh, controller developed by the Pixhawk uh, and Ardu pilot developers and uh, it is uh, very versatile and has very sensitive uh, IMUs which are very helpful um, <clears throat> actually in the future like different this IMUs and odometers could be used uh, in like union to derive more sensitive more good results 
and another point is that we had battery holder design uh, so that we can use new and better batteries with our Jaguar robot uh, not just uh, uh, like existing uh, battery holder uh, which was a bit weak. Uh, then also we have uh, we had some issues with faulty motor encoders uh, and uh, tried to come up with some workarounds. And there was some constraints due to the lab access due to car quarantine. So unfortunately, we were not able to come up <coughs> and work on the hardware part uh, as frequently as possible because of this quarantine constraint. Uh, especially for like uh, for my for like for one of us who is a non-resident of the campus as for the conclusion in this capstone project non-gps localization of mobile robot using ekf is described from the perspective of theory to hardware and simulation applications subsequently simulation in gazebo and the visual visualizing messages in rvs of robot operating systems were familiarized and brief overviews were given to them. Also, uh, robot development process is discussed. Uh, necessary uh, internal measurement units and odometry data publishers were implemented. Also, the safety measures were considered too. However, the testing on the robot is accompanied with its component issues, particularly its motor encoder issues, that affected the uh, hardware test of the project. Uh, which is the running of the algorithm on the robot and uh, finally the simulation part resulted in the icr based ekf that is more accurate than the state-of-art algorithms uh, where the state-of-art algorithm is taken from the robot uh, robot localization package uh, despite the hardware realization issues the simulation results showed a great improvement where the in the simulated environment necessary components of the robot operated as expected then for the future, potential improvements based on the project can be given as follows. It's the integration of hardware and simulation-based navigation stack. It's basically running the testing and the ICR algorithm written on the fully functional robot. Also, uh, visual odometry would be helpful for, for increasing the accuracy, where the visual in combination with the odometry from the motors uh, would change the ICR conversion, hence the EKF performance would increase. And here you can see the necessary references. And by that, we finish our presentation. Thanks for your attention.